JCD Godot. No casual Yu-Gi-Oh is not dead. It has just evolved since 2002. Let's get into some hot takes, shall we? Make sure to smash the ever-living crap out of that subscribe button so that we can get to 800 and eventually 1,000 subscribers. I really do appreciate all of the support that you have been showing on the videos as of late. So JCD Godot is sitting at almost 19,000 subscribers, and he made a video titled Casual Yu-Gi-Oh! is Dead. Here's what we do about it. And this video is actually three weeks old. I'm surprised that I didn't see this earlier. But basically, I wanted to take this video and sort of break down some things that he talks about that I feel are just sort of wrong things to say about the game when it comes to casual Yu-Gi-Oh! Because I feel like that there's some things that he just sort of overlooked in the game as a whole. And I wanted to break that down in today's video. So there's a lot to this. So I'm going to shut up and just start playing the clips, and we will go through it as we go along. So go ahead and take a look at this first clip, and then we'll discuss. You probably miss the days of an older format, no matter what format that is. You probably miss watching the show and seeing your favorite characters play cards you owned, saying their catchphrases in the schoolyard when you would win. All of this is to say that Yu-Gi-Oh's different, not just from a game design perspective, but from a personal perspective. Well, yeah, obviously, because the game has evolved since 2002. And I also want to say here that I tried my best to pick the most important clips or what I felt was the most important, but this video is over 10 minutes long. So I didn't want to just like pull 45 seconds of one clip and then show it to you. I do highly encourage that you go and watch his video from start to finish. I'm going to have a link to that down in the description. But yeah, I mean, Yu-Gi-Oh! has evolved since 2002. We're not going to be playing Giant Soldier with Stone, Blue-Eyes, White Dragon, La Jin, Mystical Genie of the Lamp, and Dark Magician, maybe even Dark Magician Girl, in 2022. That's just not how a game survives. Why is that? Why is it so hard to play Yu-Gi-Oh! in any way that isn't competitive? because Yu-Gi-Oh! has grown since it first came over here in 2002. I've been playing competitively since 2008 with my dad, and even before that, just playing casually with friends in a similar fashion, just kind of playing by our own rules or playing with whatever cards we had to try and make a decent 40 card deck out of it. Nothing really gelled well together. We just played whatever cards we wanted to play within the rules of the game or whatever rules we came up with for that day. But the game has grown since, you know, it came alive, whether it's through video games or the TV show or even the manga, whatever the case may be. I mean, I remember in 2008, 2009, going to regional events here in Jacksonville, Florida, and there was only a couple hundred people there, if that. Now, there's easily 400 people plus at some regionals that I go to, whether in my area or somewhere else, and even YCS attendances easily get over a thousand people. And that should speak for itself in regards to how healthy and how well the game as a whole is doing. But he continues on. There's a similar concept in another obscure trading card game you may have heard about called Magic. There, it's called Tabletop Magic. And you kind of have a completely different image in your mind of the statement. Yes, JCD, I do because Magic the Gathering is played by a older demographic. Majority is an older demographic than Yu-Gi-Oh. Yu-Gi-Oh advertises to kids like what, six or seven and up. However, the majority of the demographic for Yu-Gi-Oh is, let's just be honest, teenagers to adults, even older than that. I mean, I've seen grandparents, I've seen parents with their kids playing and enjoying the game. There are some kids there at some high tier events, more OTS stores than anything else, but that's what the demographic, especially competitive players is. You know, we have the Dragon Duel formats, which is just kids like what, 13 and under to compete against each other in a more, I guess, basic format, even though it's not a different format, but it's kids their age being able to play against each other instead of, you know, a 13-year-old kid having to play against a 25-year-old like me and getting stomped just because he doesn't have the same brain power or insight into the game as someone like me does. That was a big reason why Dragon Duels were created. And so to kind of compare Magic, I feel, is just kind of comparing apples to oranges. They're different for very different reasons. And there are people who have gone from Yu-Gi-Oh! to Magic and vice versa. But 
to say that it's similar, I feel is just a bit of a stretch. In anything, you'll have the tryhards or the meta players that play competitively, and good for them. That's great that they like doing anything to that degree. I used to look up random words with world championship at the end just to see what the best of a thing really is. Here it is for Tetris. You look at the peak and you know you'll never be there. If you play Tetris, no one's gonna shun you for not holding the controller like it's the power glove. But if you play Yu-Gi-Oh suboptimally, you get shunned and ridiculed. You play this card in True Draco? What's even the point? Don't you know it's blah blah blah? You've heard it all. This I will agree with because you do have the asshole players in the community where even just watching the casual game, they'll have to step in and say, why are you playing it this way? Don't you know you need to play this? Why are you playing this card? Don't you need, you need to play this card? And blah, 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 blah. I've seen that shit all the time. And it even happened to me at the Dimension Force uh, premiere. I almost said sneak peek, but it's basically the same thing. I was playing casually with a friend of mine with printed out proxies because I was testing a Therion build. And one guy watching the game, because of course it's only one guy watching the game, it's a casual game, like who gives a shit? And he just had to interject his fat fucking mouth and had to say, oh, you, you why are you playing this card? You need to play this. Oh, you can't, you, he, you can't activate that effect because of this. And I'm like, you're not even paying fucking attention. Skill drains on the board. Or, you know, you're not paying attention because I have moon mirror shield equipped. My monster's gonna have a hundred more tech. Oh, okay. It's like, shut the fuck up and just watch the game. You clearly don't know what's going on. If it's a casual game that isn't in a tournament, is not at a regional YCS. If you're going to watch, I get that you want to be helpful, but don't be a dickhole about it. Don't be that one guy in the room that everybody talks about as being a degenerate who's like, oh, why are you playing this card? You need to play this. Oh, you can't do that because of this. Just shut your mouth, mind your fucking business, and let people play. And along with that, there's toxicity in every format. It's not just Yu-Gi-Oh! But I feel like he's picking Yu-Gi-Oh! because Yu-Gi-Oh! is very popular. Whereas Magic, you know, let's be honest, you don't hear as much about toxicity in a card game compared to Magic. There is toxicity everywhere, but I feel like Yu-Gi-Oh! is the go-to because it's one of, if not the most popular card game next to Pokemon. You know, there's toxicity in everything, like in Rainbow Six Siege and, what is it, League of Legends? Like, those are two very toxic, excuse me, environments for a video game especially. And as someone who tried League and saw how toxic it was and became toxic in Rainbow and stopped playing Rainbow because of it, yeah, there's toxicity wherever you go. And I have met players in Yu-Gi-Oh! who are toxic as fuck. And I tell them the same thing, just in a more polite way. This is just a casual game. Calm your tits. Try to relax your anus. <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh! is not a place for people to come in and play whatever they want. And is that really a good thing? And to that response, I say, no deck is created equally. <laughs> I cannot tell you how many archetypes we have had in Yu-Gi-Oh! where they have not been created equally. And two perfect examples I'm going to give you. Despia and War Rocks. <laughs> two archetypes, War Rocks being a TCG exclusive and Branded not being a TCG exclusive, not being created equally at all. <laughs> there are a lot of archetypes that get similar cards to other cards. For example, Infernities come to mind. They have a card called Infernity Barrier, which is basically an Omni Negate. As long as you have no cards in your hand, you can activate it. As long as you have an Infernity Monster on the field as well, negate a card and destroy it. So now any time that a deck gets a trap card that does that, you know, whenever a spell trap or monster effect is activated, if you fulfill this condition, negate it and destroy it, people say, oh, the deck has an infernity barrier. That's pretty cool. And people will use that in their mind as a stipulation to see, okay, is this archetype going to be good? And if every archetype was created equally, what would the format even look like? You know, if Branded was created equally in regards to like Ghost Trick, well, for Ghost Trick to be as good as Branded, then couldn't we just make the argument that Ghost Trick would be a fusion-based deck like Branded? So if Branded is the best deck, then every deck in the format, if it wants to be as equally good, has to be based on fusions? Damn, Super Poly would be played at like five copies if it could in every deck then. <laughs> but let's continue. There are many people who don't care for the meta of today. Whenever today is, if today's today or today's three years ago. 
I'm sorry, I know I keep interjecting, but it's because that there are a lot of points here that I want to make sure that I hit on. People have been saying I'm tired of this format since the dawn of time. Like everybody gets tired of every format at some point and not everybody likes past formats to go back to. I've met people who say Edison format is a terrible format. I've met people that have said GOAT format is a terrible format. Hell, I've met people that have said, I really hate Dragon Ruler format, but I love Teledad format from 2008. Everybody is different when it comes to that. There were people last format who said, I hate this format. Then there were other people who said, I like this format. There are people with this format, even though it's brand freaking new, who are saying, I hate this format because it's basically the same thing. It's going to happen. I guarantee them to you when we get Splite, and it is most likely going to be a tier zero deck. I hope that it doesn't become tier zero, but it's looking like, according to OCG, it's going to be a tier zero deck here, maybe tier one or tier 0.5. But people are going to say the same damn thing. It's going to be the same song and dance, but with different colored pom-poms. I am tired of this format. It happens all the time, every format, or a broken card comes out and people say, I hate this card. And then guess what? The cycle repeats and repeats and repeats. And are then told to get good or just deal with it by other people currently complaining about the meta. It's a sociopathic cycle that leads to no one in the interaction being happy. Again, this goes back to my point about toxic players. If you have players like that in your circle, they need to be out of your circle. Or if this is at like an OTS tournament, you need to tell the OTS tournament organizers or whoever's in charge, like, hey, this person's being a dickhole. Like, seriously, I've seen it happen before. Someone's being an asshole, locals, and they're like, look, this guy's being an asshole. Can you like kick him out or like tell him to stop? And then the dude shuts his fucking mouth. Again, not everybody is toxic. You should surround yourself with people who are positive influences on you that will help you get better at the game, help you make good memories in the game. It's not necessarily about just being casual. I get if you're just a casual player going to a card shop and playing and you have some competitive dick eater who comes up and is like, why are you playing this card? You should play this and that, blah, 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 blah. That happens, those interactions happen. At the same time, you don't have to entertain those assholes. Like, you can just go on about your day and just say, I'm just a casual player, man. I'm just sitting here playing for fun. And if they have a problem with it, then you tell the, the, tur the not tournament staff, but you tell the store staff, like, this dude's being a dickhead. Like, I'm just trying to sit here and play. Can you please get him to fuck off? Like, I've done it before. Like, I've had dudes being assholes to me at, at local card shops. I'm, one comes to mind, but they're closed now, and I don't feel like shouting them out. But a dude was being an asshole, and I'm like, look, I'm not going to play this. Either you need to shut the fuck up, or I'm just not going to play. And finally, he shut his mouth. Luckily, I haven't seen that asshole in years, but guess what? He's a toxic player in my mind, and I have no idea where he even is now. So, you know what? There are toxic players in every part of the world. There are toxic players in every single format in Yu-Gi-Oh! and in life in general. People can bring a rogue deck to a YCS, and you'll have no idea what makes it rogue. Is it because you personally haven't seen it? Is it because it doesn't have consistent tournament tops? Sure, those are factors, but that's the issue. We call everything rogue. Plunder is as rogue as Gate Guardian Beatdown. That's how widely the term is used in our community. The fuck? <laughs> what? What are you talking about? <laughs> like, we're going down the road and you just whack, took a far left turn, my guy. Like, where'd that come from? So, <laughs> first of all, uh, rogue is not used that widely <laughs> in the game, at least in my circle. Um, if you've seen my my meta tier reviews, like top tier decks or whatever, where we put them all in the tier list, you know, I made that little chart there uh, at the bottom say booty booty butt cheeks. And like just your relevant shit we'd throw into booty booty butt cheek. Plunder Patrol is... Yes, Rogue, or Tier 2, depending on who you talk to, at this point in time when you're seeing this video, not a fucking year out. So don't be that guy that comments a year from now. is like, oh, Plunder Patrol is Tier 0. Look at the date of the video, pimp. <laughs> but something like Gate Guardian FTK or whatever this guy said, uh, that would go in the booty booty butt cheek category. That's not even Rogue. That's not Rogue at all. Rogue decks in Yu-Gi-Oh, I feel in my mind, I personally, I should say, define them as decks that can keep up with higher tier meta but are not played in the same numbers as meta decks. For example, if there are 600 players in a room playing branded and 
50 players in the room playing Sky Striker, well, we know that Branded is a tier one deck. Sky Striker, we know, is a rogue deck. So therefore, Sky Striker is a rogue deck based upon representation and how it's able to compete with top tier decks. However, Sky Strikers can still compete with decks like Branded. It's very possible. We see Sky Striker even today, even from last format, before we got this new format, topping events and being competitive. If you are a good enough pilot with a rogue deck, you can have the ability to top high level events. Perfect example, Salamangrate. They were a decent rogue strategy last format. Now they've got three Salamangrate Circle and three Mirage Stallio. A lot of people are playing the deck and picking it up now. Some people would argue it's gone from rogue to tier two or possibly still in rogue. That's a debate that we got to wait for the format to unfold and see where it goes. We have YCS, uh, what is it, Hartford this upcoming weekend on the 29th. So that will tell us for a fact where we stand in the format with top decks. To say that everything is rogue is, I think, a bit of a stretch. Actually, a really big stretch, my guy. Because uh, you have something like Gate Guardian. You're 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 off and casual. You're in the booty booty butt cheek category, and that's okay. I'm not saying you have to play branded. That you have to play salad. I'm just saying have a better idea of what you're saying instead of saying, oh, if it's not tier one, everything's rogue. No, that's not the case at all. If you're playing something like Cyber Dragon, that's rogue. If you're playing Beaver Warrior with an Ultra Ball on the side deck, <laughs> had to throw the Ultra Ball in the video, you're playing in the booty booty butt cheek category. And you do you, boo boo. I'm just saying, you're not gonna see that at a competitive event because it just can't keep up. And came up with a system that we believe is the way to save this game's dead casual side. I'd like to introduce you to Gafar Format. So before I play the rest of this clip, I wanna say that essentially, what he has come up with and what he talks about in the video is that he has come up with a new format slash tier system based upon Pokemon's format slash tier system that helps decks and cards that are, let's just be honest, mediocre to liquid ass be playable. Which again, I go back to my point of not every card or archetype or deck in Yu-Gi-Oh! is made equally. So they introduced a tier system. No, not like our current tier system of saying any new deck is tier zero, and then it becomes tier a billion. Again, I ask you, how often does a deck come out and is instantly tier one? <laughs> like, this doesn't happen like every single time we get a new fucking core booster set. Like, Therion's not going to be tier one. It's going to be like tier 1.5, maybe tier two. It might show up in tier one from time to time. Um, heroes are not tier one. They're tier two to rogue, debatably. Um, when Splite comes out, yeah, that's gonna be tier zero. Um, <laughs> like, War Rocks, that's an archetype that came out. It wasn't instantly tier one or tier zero. In fact, it was like tier nine million and one because it was liquid ass. Like, not everything that comes out is going to instantly be tier one. Ghost Tricks were never tier one because they were dog shit. War Rocks are never tier one because they were dog shit. Sky Strikers and Despia slash Branded were tier one when they came out because of the fact that they had good fucking support cards. When a deck like Sky Striker comes out with a card like Sky Striker Mobilize Engage, that is a Rota, that is at three, and gives you a plus draw one as long as you have three spells in your grave, yeah, you know that shit's gonna be busted as hell. So... I'm sorry, but not everything is made evenly. And if it was, then since Branded is the best deck, we need to make every single archetype right now be fusion-based and have Super Poly go to like $300 a copy and $900 a copy for Ultimates because everybody's going to be playing fucking Super Polys. So I'm not going to show you too much about him talking about Gafar format, which that name, okay, <laughs> um, because he really like pushes it down your throat near the end of the video, which I get he's pushing his Discord and his format, and that's all cool, you know, good on you. Um, but essentially, he's, I feel at least, he's nuking all of the meta cards out of existence to have this other stuff be playable, and it just doesn't gel well with me, but here, here he is talking about it. You should expect things like the Brave Engine, Alistair, just all of him, Dogmatica, and other pieces of engine soup to be obliterated on the ban list to make way for something new and fresh. You can also expect meta decks like Eldlich, these penguins I hate saying the name of, and Despia will be banned into oblivion to make way for new decks. 
And finally, in this last clip, as you can see, he just pulls a scorched earth and destroys everything meta in this Jafar, Gafar, Galar, whatever format, gauze rifle from Fallout New Vegas format that this guy is talking about. And first of all, Dogmatica isn't terrible. Um, I don't know what format you're playing, JCT, or JCD, I apologize. Uh, and also, Alistair, it, huh? Who? <laughs> this is why the Yu-Gi-Oh! community doesn't work for Konami R&D. Like, what? <laughs> he took the left turn, now he's taking the right turn, and we're just going on down this bumpy-ass road. Jesus Christ. Okay, so, um, no to, like, all of that. <laughs> um, here's the thing. A lot of people get fed up with meta decks. What you have to keep in mind is that these decks, as time goes on, unless power creep occurs, they will eventually be hit. Konami has to make that good old money off of the sets that it comes out of, off of the structure decks that they release this product in, so that they can get the most maximum um, the maximum amount of value possible before they kill it off and move on to the stuff that they want you to play. We saw this with even the March 2012 Forbidden and Limited list where they destroyed Plant Synchro, but yet Insectors, Windups, and Dino Rabbit were the biggest decks of that format. So people were confused, like, why did they not hit this stuff? And that's because that at the time, number one, the TCG and the OCG of Yu-Gi-Oh! were linked. So the OCG's balance would make our TCG balance the same. And then on top of that, the all of those cards were brand new. So they couldn't just instantly hit that stuff. Even though windups were able to loop your hand for five, potentially six cards if they had the Pot of Avarice, they didn't touch that stuff because it was fresh. It was brand new. They wanted to hit all of the synchro plant, synchro good shit dot deck stuff so that they could push people into Xyz. For pendulums, they hit old shit, push you into pendulums. For links, they hit old shit, change the rules even, put you into links. That's what Konami wants to do so that they can get you to spend those dollars on new product. Branded will eventually be hit within, shit, a year from now. You can look back at this video. This video is a year old and look at what the top decks are. And I guarantee to you, Branded's probably not going to be good. Maybe it's a tier two or rogue deck. Maybe it completely falls off the radar. Hell, when we get Splite in about two months, the format, let's say hypothetically speaking, the format explodes and takes a dump on everything and Splite kicks Branded in the fucking nuts and they're not even a deck anymore. Just everything is Splite while you're drinking your Sprite. Like, anything is a possibility. And so to say that you're going to hit all this shit just to make these dog water cards that got power creeped back when Egypt was still like a first world country, <laughs> like, it's, it's just not what casual Yu-Gi-Oh is, I feel. I feel like casual Yu-Gi-Oh is just, you can play whatever fucking cards you want. You can have whatever ban list you want. And if that's what you're doing with this, that's cool. But if you want your casual format to have diversity, why would you ban all of this meta stuff just to make this format? Why not just limit the cards? Why not you know, put restrictions on them, like, instead of just banning everything outright, you know, it kind of reminds me of what happened at uh, one of my OTSs years ago, where they used to do a thing called Fun Deck Day, where everybody would bring in their fun decks and not necessarily their meta decks uh, to play in that day's tournament. Well, of course, you get the ass munchers who show up with, like, Tier 0 Light Sworn or Teledad and say, oh, well, this is my fun deck, and then everybody has to play their competitive shit. So, I get where you want to exclude those competitive cards out of that pool, but even if all that shit's banned, you know people are going to go back to earlier meta shit. People, they can't play branded or invoked. Okay, they're going to go back to Dragon Link. Oh, um, Flunderies is destroyed out of existence. Well, I'll just go back to whatever was meta before. They're just going to keep going back on the ladder. Oh, Mystic Mine isn't banned? I'll just play Mystic Mine Burn. Then nobody's having a good fucking time at that point. That's like the nuclear option. You're going to hit my meta deck? Fine, fuck you. I'm going to go and play Mystic Mind Burn. So, guys, keep in mind, I'm not trying to, like, shit on this guy. I just feel that there were some things that he said in this video that are overlooked and kind of 
trend into the competitive Yu-Gi-Oh side, which I don't think he wanted to do. He wanted to keep it strictly casual, but based upon how he explained things in this video, it's like he's trying to also change competitive to be more casual. And it, it, that's just not possible. Casual and competitive are just two totally different positions in a room that are just never going to come together. It's just not going to happen. You can't take War Rocks. You can't take Beaver Warrior, Benkai OTK, whatever, and expect to do well in competitive Yu-Gi-Oh. It's just not going to happen. I'm sorry. You want it to be good. I get that. But casual strategies are casual strategies for a reason. Morphtronics, even with their new support, it's cool that they got new support. They're still a casual deck, and they're going to be dog water. That's not to be mean to the casual crowd. I'm just being realistically honest with you that it's not going to be good. Decks like Branded, with the cards they have, again, not everything is made equally because that's just fucking impossible, are strictly better. So guys, please, thank you for watching. Let me know what you think. Again, I'm not trying to hate on JCD. I'm just trying to provide more insight into this video. Be sure to go and check out the full video linked in the description. Be sure to go and subscribe to JCD too. He seems like a pretty cool guy. And he's got the Seal Warrior Calcus tattooed on his fucking arm. Like, that's cool. Guys, thanks for watching. And I will see you in the next video.